Welcome to Running Meetings with Microsoft Link. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup, and I'm glad to be your host for today's event. Also joining us today as our key presenter is Doug Thomas. He's a Senior Content Developer for Office.com, and recently the lead of Office 15-Minute Webinars. So he's a pro at giving these kind of events for people and does it regularly with a weekly series with demos and Q&A on Office Help and How To. He has created and appeared in more than 250 videos at Microsoft, including Office Casual, an award-winning personality-driven how-to series. So he really is a terrific expert for us to have joining us on the line. You'll also see on the back end Ali Bezdikian from TechSoup who will be there to help you with any questions and any technical issues throughout the webinar. Thank you so much, Doug, for being here today. We really appreciate having you as part of the program. Welcome. Oh, happy, happy, to, happy to be here, Becky. Thank you uh, very much. Um, and yeah, um, so running, I'll just say running, uh, talking about how to run things on Link while, while working on a, another piece of software that we're doing it here, it's kind of like a hall of mirrors. So we won't be able to show everything, but um, um, let me go ahead and start sharing my screen here. And um, uh, you, we can start talking, and we'll start with the basics since a good majority of folks uh, have not used Link or um, uh, have not even heard of it, or if they've heard of it, they haven't worked on it a lot. The way I explain Link to folks is it's basically people understand the I am premise of talk, chatting with people, but it's kind of like I am on steroids. Uh, this page, by the way, if you wanted to go to it, is office.com slash link. Uh, just kind of the basic information that you have. So you can do many things with it. And one of the great things is even if you're starting with a conversation, which several folks had done, you can add on to those things without going into another area or another tool or adding in some sort of a download. It's all encompassing in links. So I could chat with uh, uh, Molly like I'll do today who's going to help me out today. Um, and at the same time, uh, with the same tools, I could run the webinars we used to do that here for up to 250 people uh, that don't even have link um, and do those for a public webinars. So it's, the whole gamut is there with, with that. In fact, uh, when you have link, it works with meetings. We'll show that. And also it basically becomes your telephone. In fact, I'm talking to you through the telephone. I'm not picking up the receiver. I'm just going through my phone. I'm sorry, through my computer, which acts as my phone. All of that is there. And you've probably, if you've listened to the news, you've heard a lot with Skype. Uh, Microsoft bought Skype a couple years ago. There'll be more integration with Skype and Link um, as we go forward. Um, but again, there's a lot of things you can do with it. I'm just going to go over some of the basics and then kind of uh, show several different things and some for folks who have worked with Link, some gotchas that you might want to see. But we'll have plenty of time for questions. So if there's areas you want to go down into, we can certainly do that. Um, this here is about their top feature page. If you have a, when you have a chance, this video up here in the upper right-hand corner is, is quite good in showing how it works with multiple devices. Uh, there is going to be link apps for everything, uh, different types of phones, iPhones, Android devices, all that stuff. Um, we're going to stick with the PC version today, which comes with Office 365 um, uh, for business and for nonprofits. So um, you can spend your time a lot on this page and see a lot of different areas. Uh, but again, we'll stick kind of with the PC version. Um, let's, uh, let me um, bring in kind of, this is, this is my link um, that, I'm, that I work with all day. And I've kind of, again, because I'm, this is my actual link, it's not a fictitious account, I've kind of hidden some things and stuff like that. But this is how I deal with my day. And if I want to contact folks, I can do that. Um, I'm not going to go through a lot here. We'll, still, we'll do more with meetings and things like that since that's what we're talking about. But you can have all this information here. And one of the things that comes with a link is what we call presence. So you can see here there's four folks down here who have uh, uh, some sort of light by them, uh, whatever. The Chris, if I want to talk to Chris, he's available. Dave looks like he's uh, uh, busy right now. And Justin and Molly are in a call because they're actually on this call right now. And of course, I'm in a call too. So you can see how where people are if they're at their computer, if you can talk to them. Um, there's different variants. In fact, as soon as I start presenting via link, I go to a do not disturb um, presence so people can't disturb me while I'm actually presenting. Again, this is kind of weird because I'm presenting inside 
uh, you know, the hall of mirrors, as we so to speak. But if I wanted to contact someone, I just simply click on their name. I'm going to work with Molly here, um, who's uh, helping us out today. And um, there we go. And again, I could just start an IM chat here. Um, and again, this presence that we see here is the same that we'll see for meetings and everything else. You can do everything from this screen pretty much that I'm going to show you. Um, and, uh, I, and we'll just go some, through some of the icons and things like that. Um, and so I could call uh, Molly if I want. Again, I won't do that because I'm working with you. We're not going to get much into video here, though there I am. Um, there is a, uh, I'm a big fan of using video in conferencing. That's why you can do it, especially you can use it with HD cameras, but we won't talk a lot about that today. And the nice thing is if you notice on the screen, that's actually the video preview. So I haven't, with Molly, I'm not talking on video yet. I can just preview to make sure I look good before I hit the button, you know. Um, yeah, y'all look good. Y'all should be using video if you haven't. Um, but there's other ways we can do it here. Molly, if you can uh, get to this and go ahead and respond, I'm just going to show people how they can see. You can actually see when Molly is typing, let alone um, – I don't know how it does that, but it actually reads that Molly's typing uh, even before I see the message. So I know that I'm engaged with Molly and can get things done. And again, Molly could be across uh, – could be the other side of the building or across the world or another part of campus. Um, it, it's, you know, like all internet messaging, it works very well here. And this conversation will actually be saved in Outlook. Um, uh, it's called conversation history. So if you have, again, this might turn into an impromptu call, but we might make a, a meeting and make some major decisions in that, and that can all be captured. Um, let's show you some other th options here you can do. Uh, I will say that, um, Again, you can use Link for everyone, even inside or outside your domain. Again, the Skype integration will help with that. Um, they don't have, it works best for internal, but you can use it for external. And you can get up to 250 people in a call. That's just out of the box. So um, uh, you can get a lot of folks in there. Um, things I can do here in Link um, include I can share um, if I just mouse over this um, icon here, these are all the things I can share, um, including uh, my monitor, which I'll show you in just a minute, uh, programs, if you just want to show, let's say, I just want to show Excel and not worry about what else is on my computer at that time, uh, whiteboards, polls, Q&A, Q &A. you can do all of that uh, with there. And there's also integration with OneNote for, for if you want to take notes. And that's two options. Do I want to share the notes with everyone else in the call? They'll automatically get a link. Or I'm just taking notes for myself. Um, and then the other thing here is dealing with people. So if we were starting this conversation, we realized, ooh, I need to get somebody else in, um, I can go ahead and invite more people here. And I can just type in either their name or um, uh, their, um, their email. And I'll just invite Justin in here. And then he can join the meeting also. And you can see the pictures up here at the top. If we were running video, the video would be up here, not their pictures. And we could start an audio call, though I, I can't do that because, again, I'm doing the audio call for uh, the meeting here. But a lot of times we would just go ahead and do this with audi audio and uh, messaging at the same time. But you know, at the same time, you get a lot done via IM um, if you're doing something else. So as you can see, I could be on a call with somebody and still you know, uh, get some work done with Justin and Molly if I'm just listening to a conference call and, and not disturbing anything. So that's one of the nice things of Link. Not that you would do some fun conversations while you're trying to work, but you know what I mean. You can do both things. Uh, I'm just not going to engage the audio here today uh, just because um, of this presentation that we're working on. So um, let's see here. Other things we can do. So I can manage content here. First of all, let me share my monitor. Now, uh, I'm at my office, and yes, I, I'm sorry, but I do have three monitors here. But let me just go ahead and share the primary monitor. And if there's a problem, uh, Becky, if you can just let me know. Everything should be working here. Again, it's kind of the house of mirrors. I'm presenting now two things here with, um, with both um, the TechSoup audience and then with uh, uh, Molly and Justin here. But basically, as you can see, it, it's going to show off my monitor. And if you can see, uh, maybe you can't, there's kind of a – um, at the very top here, I can, I can give control to folks so they can actually take over, or I can show things. So let's say I wanted to bring in a document here. Um, so let me just bring in, let me open up a folder here, 
and I, um, I will uh, let's open up uh, an Excel document or something like that. And we could share this. Uh, it's a little big. Let me shrink that down here a little bit. We could. Um, so basically, if I want to talk numbers now, I could share um, this screen and this with um, with Justin and Molly at the same time. Now I can also do this. I can give control. Now you can request permissions, or I can give permission to Molly to say. Uh, you, she now has control. So Molly, if, if this works for you, um, go ahead and um, uh, go ahead and can you can you uh, um, move the mouse and all that? Again, this might be this house of mirrors effect where we can't do that. Um, yeah, there you go. So that now she's clicking on things. If, uh, go ahead and click the tab at the bottom here. I'm not doing no, not that tab. Uh, the tab in the Excel spreadsheet. See, the other thing is they could suddenly you know, ruin everything here. Uh, go up to the tab that says Financial Summary in that, or just, yeah, or Color a Cell or something like that, I guess would work fine. So right now, I'm talking to you, I'm doing the call, and Molly is actually running this computer. So she can monkey all that she wants. Um, the nice thing is, this is how our tech folks work with us on our computer. So if I have a tech problem and I can still call in to the tech center, my computer is working that way, they can take control of the computer and go into you know, the control panels and all the areas that they need to go to figure out what's wrong with my computer. So that's kind of the control that we have. And you can have permissions of who can accept and who cannot give control. That's fine. So what I'm going to do now is, let's see, now I'm going to take this over. I'm going to go to the top here, and I'm going to take back control. So you can add documents to link. You can, in fact, let's go back to that screen. I'm going to shut down this Excel. And uh, Molly, go ahead and add a document here to, um, to our conversation here. Um, this is one of those things that I think I was working on link a couple years before I even realized you could do this, that uh, folks can add documents to the screen. So Molly, if Molly wanted to show me a document, there's two things. I could give her present, I could give her control and she could take over the uh, call and she could display her computer or you can add documents to um, the conversation. Um, and if that doesn't work, I know Justin was able to do that earlier so we might be able to show it that way. I'm going to come back to that but we'll, we'll show you that, um, that feature as it, you can add documents. So again, this is just and a Doug? chat that started, yes? Sorry, we have Hello? one question that came in that kind of referred to the yeah. chat. So Paul asked, um, so will Justin see the conversation from before he was added to the conversation? So since we're still looking at this same conversation thread here, would he be able to see the history, sure. or would it only start from when he was added? Uh, Justin would only see the information once he started it. Um, so it, we'd have to catch him up. Just like if he walked into a real meeting, we'd have to do the, hey, here's what you missed, Justin. Oh, why were you late kind of thing. So yeah, no, you don't, you don't go back and see that information there. Um, so let's see here. Now, I didn't get notification, but I see that down here there was an attachment. Interesting. Okay, so documents can pop up. In fact, um, let me just go ahead, and you can add documents to the conversation. Um, let me, uh, let's start this a little bit uh, over, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let me move this off screen, and this off screen too, and let's open up Outlook um, and show you how you would start a meeting here. So I'm in my calendar view, um, and what I'm going to do is go up here, and if you, when link is in, uh, integrated into Outlook, you get this new button up here. So you, I can start an appointment or a meeting here, but there's a thing called a link meeting. So I can go ahead and start a meeting this way. Um, and basically it's populated down here in the message area with information for the meeting. There is a phone number in case people cannot, are not on a computer. If they just want to call in and listen, they can certainly do that. But most folks would just click on this link um, that has a URL, as you can see there. Um, and then I could you know, send this to whoever I wanted to, um, get the information sent, all of that uh, works just fine. Now up here in the area of the link meeting, there's meeting options. And let's click on those. 
all of these things you can change once you're in the meeting, but you can set them up in advance. And there's a couple things you probably want to do here. Let's just go down these uh, few things here. Um, you can do a new meeting space or have a dedicated meeting space. Dedicated meeting is really good for if you have weekly meetings um, uh, inside that's just internal. Uh, because that way, any document you store will just stay there. Um, it's the same URL each week. Um, so it's a, it's a little um, uh, more of a uh, keeps things together. I usually do this new meeting space up here. You can control the permissions each time. Again, all of these permissions you can change once you're in the meeting. But if you want to set things up, for example, if you um, – want to put people, uh, if you know you're externally going to have some people and you're doing sensitive information, you can only put in people from my company can get in. Everyone else will go into the lobby and I'll have to bring them in. Uh, you can announce the presence. Uh, that seems so 90s though. Um, you can talk about who is going to be the presenter. So normally what we set up here is anyone that's in the organization can present right away. I can elevate people or uh, make people a participant, not a presenter at any time. But um, these are options you can do. Here's a big one though. Mute all attendees. If you, I mean, we've all been in any conference call where everyone has an open mic, even if it's more than five people, suddenly you hear, you know, the mic picks up everything, talking, typing, things falling over, conversations, all of that. If you're going to have a large meeting, um, you can just mute all attendees from the start and then later you can unmute them if you need to. So that's one thing that I check if I'm going to more than you know, a few people. And um, you can do those permissions here and for each meeting if, if you want to. So that's how you would set up a meeting. Um, let's uh, do this. Let me um, close this um, and go into a meeting here that I've already set up in advance. So once this meeting pops up, it's going to look the same for Molly and Justin, who I invited, as it does to me. And all we do to join this meeting, and again, we'll cross our fingers here with this hall, hall of mirrors. This should open up just fine. I'm going to click on Join Link Meeting. Again, information is down here in case I'm calling in, if I'm on the road or whatever and don't have it. Though I must say there are link apps for your phone. So I actually have used Link with video on a phone when I'm not uh, at the office. So that, that can happen. So let me, you can do multiple conversations at the same time and go back and forth. You just have to hit the resume call button. Um, yes, you do get to see their pictures. I can show you how you make those smaller or not seen. Uh, but as, the nice thing about Molly and Justin, even my picture, we actually have clear pictures here. So if you have, if, uh, if in your um, link photos or in your um, structure of your company, if you've put a goofy picture there, uh, one, I would put pictures of what you actually look like. So if if I see you in the hall, I know it's you. But um, it's good to have uh, a good picture here, um, uh, you know, and so people know who you are. Because sometimes with Link, you just see this. Now, we'll show you how you can get that um, uh, different, but that's what pops up. So again, Justin and Molly and I are all seeing the same screen here. It's just what we saw before. I have the uh, presenters up here. We have our I am chat. Um, I can present materials here if I want to. I can share screens if I want to. We can go into a whiteboard or a poll. Um, there's options here I can work on with the participants. Uh, do I want to mute the audience? Yes. Uh, do I want to hide the names? If you can see our names, if I hit that, the names disappear. So if you're working outside, you don't want the names to appear, uh, you could do that too. There's several other options. The trick with Link is you mouse over the icons, and then you, um, you, know, then you can see other options. And there's lots of menus. As you can see here, you can change between your uh, setup that you have. So I could easily click this over if I didn't have my headset on to the PC mic or even the phone, which is connected via link into my computer. Um, so you can change your options quickly if you need to, because sometimes I take these calls uh, with just the regular mic on my computer. Sometimes I put on the headset. Um, but if you're doing a webinar, you always want the best microphone possible. Um, so let's, uh, let's see some other things that we can get into. Uh, we've talked about sharing screens. We've talked about putting documents in. You can load documents here. So let's actually go into here a little bit. So all the things I can share. I can share a monitor. I could just share a program. Now, if you have a single screen, to do some sort of limitation might be good. If you click on program here, you can just limit to whatever you want to talk about. Let's say I just want to show Excel. 
So if I pop into email, if I pop into link, if I go on the web and start looking at cat videos or whatever, you don't see that. You just see Excel. So you can control that. But believe it or not, the best fidelity, the best um, you know, that you're not gumming up the computer with lots of different things is to show the monitor, believe it or not, is to just go ahead and share the monitor and that will do the best in making sure that everyone sees everything at once. Because there is some delay on link. There is some, uh, you know, some days are going to be better than others. It depends upon your connection and things like that. Um, uh, let's see here. So um, the other thing that I do a lot is if I'm going to present a meeting, and I'm going to even show a deck or whatever, what I do load up is a PowerPoint, and I've done this in advance down here. I've loaded this PowerPoint slide, so let me uh, turn that on, and we'll present this slide. Oops, I don't know why the icon suddenly appeared. And that's just one slide. And so the people that see the link meeting just see this slide right now, and I can do stuff behind the scenes before the meeting starts. And what I might do is if I'm going to present a whole deck, I will keep this slide on, I can check the deck, I can make last minute updates to the deck, and then when I'm ready to run the deck or run my screen, I can do that. Um, but that's kind of a practice that I use sometimes is just loading up that first slide in the pre-show so I can do things uh, uh, behind the scenes, so to speak. Um, the, um, some other things that you can work on here, in fact, let's go ahead and, and um, uh, let's do uh, some of the fun things. Um, you can do things with um, uh, whiteboards and polls. Again, I could have done this in the call when I was just calling uh, 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 Molly. Ooh, before that, how do I get rid of those pictures, Doug? I don't like seeing my face everywhere. Down here, again, another icon is called Pick a Layout. And you just click on that, and you get different views you can speak. So I want to do the content view, and now those pictures are away, and people are just viewing the content. So that's one way to get those pictures out of the way. I can also click on these icons if I don't want to show this, per, this whole list here. If I just click on that icon, it goes away. If I click on this icon, the people go away, and now we're just presenting the slide. So on these icons, mousing over them or clicking on them, you'll find different menus, and that's just kind of, I, I've just done it through exploring, basically. Uh, you can read all about it that you want, but to click on these things and just kind of work on them yourselves is, is I always found out the best way to work on that. So again, different views, different things. Um, let's see, what time we got here? Okay, we're half an hour in. I'm um, just trying to think of, again, I, I can definitely get into more things. Let's show something off like a poll, though. I have, you can start a new poll. I've actually pre-made a poll. And so I'll put it up here. And the same kind of thing you just saw with, uh, for the TechSoup, we ask a question here. Um, we can go ahead and uh, pull in um, uh, uh, these questions. And again, I get, the same, I get the same thing. I can open and close the poll. I can show the results to everyone. I can see the results are hidden. Um, I see that I'm dealing with the right people in Justin and Molly, that they prefer dark chocolate. Because I've heard there are these other things like milk chocolate. I've heard of that. But uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a dark, I'm a dark, in fact, I'll vote for dark chocolate too. So it will be um, um, a pure um, three responses. And you could change your vote if you wanted to. Everyone just gets the vote once though. That's the um, thing with the poll. And you can see the lines uh, change and all that. Um, it's technically health food. Totally agree, Justin. Um, See, they didn't even know I was going to go there. Um, <laughs> and again, if I wanted to see these, so you can see Justin made a conversation that I did not see, but I get a pop-up box. If I wanted to go back and see those, that conversation again, I just click on it, and then it appears right there, the whole conversation that we've had. Click it again, and it goes away. So clicking and mousing on icons is a really a, a big way to work on uh, these things. And again, I can... Uh, show the results to everyone. So now Justin and Molly would see the results. You can also work with whiteboards. Um, let's do this here. If I go into the whiteboard here, and uh, again, you can actually add things. In fact, um, you know, I'm going to try this really quick. Um, I'm going to add a picture here. 
And then, so anyone can use this whiteboard. Uh, you can make little scrolls. You can do check marks here. This is actually the setup when we would do our office 15-minute webinars. Uh, this is Chris Downs, who was my partner, who kind of ran the link meetings while we did the demo. We used to do, now we do fancier stuff with cameras and things like that. But this was kind of a setup that we did. Happy to go over and talk to you about how we did webinars. You can see those multiple cameras and microphones and things like that. But again, they're augmenting the screen here um, with, uh, as you can see, you can use stamps and arrows. You can draw lines. You could do this uh, and share items with uh, everything you want to. You can make little funny shapes if you wanted to. Um, there's Chris's new haircut. Um, and oops, the picture disappeared. Why now? What? I guess someone maybe deleted it. Because Molly and Justin are presenters, that could have happened. But let's say someone's doing something they shouldn't be doing. I'm going to go back over here to the list. Oh, thank you for bringing the picture back. So what I can do here is I have the power to right-click on names, and I can remove people. So if I knew Justin was being a bad, bad person or writing things I didn't want him to write, I could remove him or just simply make him an attendee. So now he has different permissions. I could give him permissions to present, or, um, uh, but if he was doing certain things, I'd have to give those permissions to go ahead and use the whiteboard or things like that. So you can control uh, during the meeting what's going on with that information. Um, just the last couple things that uh, we'll I'll talk about, and then I'll be happy to open up to questions and go wherever you'd like me to on this. Um, so if you send someone a link meeting and they don't have a link and they click on that link message, let me show you that again. So I sent this to somebody. They don't have a link and they click on join the link meeting. What happens to them is they get, uh, it just goes to a simple URL, and they get this screen here, which is the link web app. And they can type in and join this meeting. So let's say it's Sally. Again, this has nothing to do with pre-registering or who they are. I could type in any name here I want to. Um, and they could sign in with their Office 365 account or just they don't have to. And they can join the meeting here. Now we're doing mirror within mirror within mirror within mirror. So uh, Sally now is basically in the virtual lobby. Let me go back to my meeting here. Uh, which one's our meeting here? Here it is. Uh, let me go back to, I'm going to present that slide again. Let me go back and do the welcome slide. I get a notification down here that one person is waiting in the lobby, and there is Sally right there. Because Sally was not a presenter. She's in the lobby. I can deny access or go ahead and admit access, and so I'll do that. So now Molly is – I'm sorry, Sally is joined. Sally and Molly. Uh, Sally is here is joined into the conference. And if I go to Sally's screen now, this is what she sees. Uh, there you go. She sees the faces at the top, and she'll see whatever I'm presenting. Happens to be here that I'm just presenting the slide. Her mic is muted, you can see down here. Um, you can get details, and she can, she can ask permission for stuff, but I can totally deny it. Or I can, again, with those presets, I could totally make it that she's just witnessed. Uh, she just witnesses what's going on here. She could contact us directly, but I could make it that, again, that you don't do that. She could go to what just is the presentation view and just see the slides. So I do a lot of demos, as you can tell on Link, so to make the screen as big as possible. And it's still, this looks and feels like Link, even though I'm just in a browser. Any updated browser should work. Firefox, Safari, Chrome, I'm on Internet Explorer here. Um, one last note that I'll make about anything that deals with link, and that's this little key button down here called mute. Let me, actually, let me get uh, Sally off here and come back to my screen. Um, now, this is a little different because, again, we're in the Hall of Mirrors, so to speak. But to put your – to make sure you know how to get to this mute button is, uh, is critical. Um, because you want to be able to mute right away. Um, some microphones have that button. Uh, in fact, um, let me do this if I can. Uh, let me get rid of the invite here. Oh, I don't get, I don't get the uh, video now. Let's see if I do it this way. Maybe I can get the video. Hang on here. Let me show you what I've done in video. Yeah. So, yeah, you're seeing that. So this is the little button that is connected to my headset. It's got a call button and a mute button here. Um, I actually, as for this call here, I actually button it right below camera um, so I can get to it very quickly. If you present, know thy mute button is one of the commandments. 
Um, because anytime you scrabble for it, anytime you're thinking, oh golly, where's the mute button and all that, it's, you know, for people who just start off, it's always the joke. But if you want to do a top presentation, do it well. You just got to know uh, exactly where the mute button is. So just to remind you that link is available in the Microsoft Office Professional 2013 donations through TechSoup. You can also get it as standalone product donations through the through the Microsoft program um, with TechSoup. So you can get Link Server and Link uh, Client Access, Access License if you want to have it individually installed on machines in your office. And it's available as part of the Office 365 for nonprofits donations, which are, uh, I think there's four different levels available at this point. So we'll point you to all of those in those follow-up resources. And I'd like to just thank you, Doug, for taking the time. Uh, we really appreciate you doing this introduction to what LINK is and how you can create and run meetings using this really cool tool. Thanks to Molly and Justin for helping on the back end with the demo. And thank you to Allie for helping with uh, managing questions. Lastly, thank you to webinar, our webinar sponsor today, ReadyTalk, for providing the use of the ReadyTalk 500 platform that's also available in our catalog at TechSoup.org slash ReadyTalk.